Welcome to Pretense of Justice News Update. We keep our pulse on legal issues. We are compassionate, informative, and driven. We advocate justice for all. We are Pretense of Justice. Let the justice begin. Welcome to Pretense of Justice News Update. Let's get into today's update. This article is titled, What Public Defenders See Authorized for Release But Still Jailed. In Prince George County, Maryland, a procedural quirk puts jails, not judges, in charge of pre-trial release decisions. So this particular article <clears throat> came out in uh, December 2020. Okay. Keith Lotridge, chief public defender in Prince George's County, Maryland, explains the problem. You're arrested for a crime, he says. Within 24 hours, you appear for initial bail review. There's a charging document maybe a statement by the alleged victim. On the basis of that, the judge makes a determination on bond. Except the judge doesn't do that. In Prince George's County, the system allows for more than a binary decision on remand or release. Judges may elect to walk through door number three. Pre-trial option. Lotridge says, the defendant is authorized for a release, but the decision is left up to the pretrial release unit. Pretrial services is a subdivision of the jail, a corrections office. Among other things, it's responsible for supervising defendants through electronic monitoring, mirroring a process that may take place before bail hearing in other states, like the Criminal Justice Agency Review, arrestees go through in New York City, the defendant's the, uh, suitability for release is scored according to a series of criteria. These may include an address in the county, a telephone number, no pending cases in any other county, no active monitoring in Washington, D.C., etc. Assuming the defendant meets enough criteria, he or she can be released. Pre-trial services are often lauded as an alternative to cash bail. But the system is flawed, as Lotridge puts it. If you're not from Prince George's, uh, George's County, but get arrested there, or you don't have a landline telephone, who does anymore? Or, of course, if you're homeless, you might not pass the risk assessment test. The main problem, however, has to do with the chronological the, of the assessment, which allows both judges and the jail to play volleyball with de detention decisions. In the purity of the bail process, described by Lotridge, judges can punt crucial decisions about release to pre-trial services. Although the system seems not to have been designed for this purpose, Lotridge is careful to point fingers at the jail system, not the bench, as it currently stands. Judges facing thorny decisions can buy the equivalent of a political option contract, options contract as an alternative to judgment. If the defendant is innocent but ends up unjustly jailed for a long time before trial, not the judge's fault. He or she authorized release. If the accused gets out and commits a serious crime, also not the judge's fault. It was pretrial services that released the defendant, not the judge. Often, defense attorneys won't even know the client is still in, 
incarcerated. They may leave a bail review hearing thinking a client is getting out only to find out days later through a relative that the defendant is still inside. Lotridge's office at the point will often seek a second bail review, but that's no guarantee of release. Meanwhile, the defendant is sitting in what amounts to a locked concrete closet, as Lotridge says. Howard University's Thurgood Marshall Civil Rights Center just released a study about bond hearing in Prince George County and observed an additional dystopian complication. Judges routinely order someone detained without bond but give them the option of release to pretrial services. However, pretrial services in turn often require judges to explicitly order pretrial release rather than give the defendant the option for pretrial services. The clinic has observed defendants stuck in limbo in which the judge passes the buck to pretrial services and pretrial services passes the buck to the judge with neither taking full responsibility for the release of the defendant. The end game to this hamster wheel of non-decision is that people get stuck as two systems fail to act, as Lotridge puts it. As a result, people authorized for release stay in jail, a problem that's particularly serious in the COVID-19 era. We've had less than five jury trials since March, Lotridge says. If they decide not to release a defendant, they could be in jail for a year before they get anywhere near a trial date. The pandemic underscored the obscenity of this situation. Last spring, at a time when Prince George County was being described as the epic center of coronavirus outbreak in Maryland, the Prince George County Jail was a hot spot within a hot spot. Department of Corrections Director Mary Lou McDonald at the time was comparing jails to cruise ships without the views or amenities. Reports began to leak from uh, uh, reports began to leak out from inside the jail that prisoners weren't being educated about COVID-19 and precautions were limited to giving inmates one paper mask and one or two bars of soap when they arrive. The situation deteriorated to the point where the Civil Rights Court filed a class action suit on behalf of prisoners accusing the Prince George County Jail for, of fueling a health crisis by failing to take basic steps to protect detainees. At the time of the suit, the jail was holding at least 113 people who'd been authorized for release in highly infectious conditions. They argued it was legal. As the AP put it, the county draws a distinction between court-authorized and court-ordered releases. Its lawyers say nobody has been detained in violation of a court order. An additional problem, best left for a longer article, involves another step taken by this jail and by others across the country. Prisoners affirmatively ordered released but kept inside anyway by correctional officers, correction, correction, uh, correctional officials simply not wanting to release COVID positive de- defendants into society. As the Maryland suit described it, the jail also refused to, refuses to release COVID positive prisoners even when they have no legal basis to detain them until the jail deems them non-contagious. If and when the pandemic comes under control thanks to vaccines, we can be sure prisoners will be the last in line to get those the tally of prisoner deaths is likely to be extremely high. 
as of this writing, over 249,000 prisoners have contracted the disease with 1657 deceased, a crisis surely complicated by procedures like the one Lotridge describes. We have people who are dying in the jails across the country, Lotridge says. We can do something about it if we simply get people out of there. The, loop, the loophole in Prince George County is just one example of a creeping problem of the bureaucrat of jurisprudence. In the public imagination, decisions about things like pretrial detentions are legal matters, with judges weighing the risk of flight, the seriousness of crime, and so on. In truth, these questions are often decided by things that have nothing to do with cases, like access to money, the size of the venue's case backlog, or the detention procedures and the jurisdiction. In this bureau bureaucracy, as in any other, when people can pass the buck, they will, even when lives are ex at stake. So uh, this article is by the blog TK News, and this article is by Matt uh, Tybee, and the title of the article is What Public Defenders See, Authorized for Release but Still Jailed, and it came out on December 14, 2020. So I want to thank you all for tuning in to Pretense of Justice News. If you are not subscribed to us, I highly encourage you to subscribe, like, and share. And I also just want to remind you that Dr. Carmen Johnson's book is also on sale. She is taking pre-orders. We will put the link to purchase a pre-order copy of her book in the description. And her organization, her nonprofit organization, HOT, which is designed to help inmates. Uh, they currently have merchandise that you can purchase to support the organization. I will put that link in the description as well. And you can also donate to the organization. And if you have any questions for us, um, if you know of any needs, you can also reach out to us as well. I will put uh, contact information in the description as well. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Pretense of Justice News. And we will be back soon. Thank you so much.